Hello. Uh, this video is about what to do if you're hearing voices. And when I say hearing voices, I mean that you are struggling with psychosis and you hear yourself talking to yourself, but it doesn't sound like you, and it doesn't sound like something that you would say. So that is what it means when people say they're hearing voices. Um, so I want to suggest some strategies for that. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that it's a very difficult experience when that's happening. Um, and I have a lot of empathy for people who struggle with that because I have struggled with that in the past. Um, so I know how difficult it is. Um, but I also want to point out that it's possible to repair it so that it doesn't keep happening. Um, it's not easy. It takes a lot of work, a lot of discipline, and a lot of focus um, to heal that, but it is possible. So I just want to put that out there right at the beginning. Um, so, so one of the first things I do, one of the first things that I did, uh, if I was starting to hear a voice, um, was make sure that I'm not anywhere where I would harm myself. Um, or someone else, like that's very important to keep that in mind that your safety and other people's safety is the most important thing. Um, and then from there, uh, the analysis part starts to come in where I would ask myself, have I ever heard someone say this to me in the past? Um, or can I trace this back to something that was said to me in the past? And um, usually I could. Uh, and if I was able to, then the way that I understood it was that there was a part of my mind that was replaying the trauma of what had been said to me in the past. And uh, when I was able to like catch that, notice, okay, somebody, this person said that to me before, so I'm just saying that to myself um, because I am repeating what was done to me. Uh, then I was able to notice that and I would call that a cycle, like a trauma cycle. So my job began, began uh, my job became to pause the cycle. So I see this happening right now. Let me pause this. Let me focus on something else such as my breathing. Let me do some movement, let me put on some music, let me do some art around it. Um, but the idea was to redirect my attention to something that would help me come into the present moment as a way of breaking up the cycle so that it didn't just keep continuing the way that it was. But I took did a purposeful action that would change the energy and would change the direction of the energy. Um, and so... So that kind of would shake everything up a bit because I wasn't just like going along with what had been happening with the voice. I was actually choosing to do a, a coping strategy and take one of my tools from my tool belt and do that instead and focus my energy there. So then, so then I would witness this internal voice or this, this, this voice as another part of myself, um, but it was, you know, a very estranged part of myself, a part that was really far away, but it would be like, what, we're going to do art now? Like this voice would actually have this double take because it was like, this isn't what was supposed to happen, but it would be, it was, it was sort of, I was actually treating the voice like it was some, someone else that I was trying to heal. So I'm healing myself, soothing myself with an activity or something that, that feels good uh, and good for me and also doing that for the voice, for these, this internal voice. <clears throat> so that would kind of shake up things, and it would change what was happening and change the dynamic, um, and it would change the underlying emotion uh, that was present. Um, and then the next step would be to understand what emotions this, uh, this other voice was feeling. You know, what emotion did this part feel? Uh, what emotion did it feel back when it initially happened? And then that emotion had been repressed, shoved down, or ignored, or, or dissociated from, or, or compartmentalized. And over time, that emotion and that energy had changed to become its own, like it almost 
almost its own shoot off or break break off part. And then, so that's why it becomes hard to recognize it because it, it separate, you separate it from yourself and then it starts to change on its own. So being able to get to the emotions that are underneath whatever the, the, the voice is saying to you is very important. And then being able to meet those emotions, being able to be compassionate towards it, being able to hold and embrace those emotions and see the fear or see the anger or see the grief or the shame that's underneath whatever that voice is saying to you. Um, when you're able to connect to the emotion on that level, then there is this release. That part lets go and that part opens up um, and then that part integrates back into the whole um, in a different way. Like you're changed because you understand this whole new part of yourself that was really disconnected and really far away from you before. And you kind of meet them in the middle. So, so you, you feel different at the same time that this part has like opened up and let go and changed and like not, not got its own little collection of energy anymore, but like opened up into the whole. Um, so it's really transforming and healing on a, a many levels when you go through that process. And so I stopped being afraid of those voices when I found this strategy. And I would just keep using the strategy every time and keep engaging with the voices and understanding what emotions were underneath there and where that came from in me, what part when that happened that I would start to feel that I had start to feel that way or start to started to feel that way and and like um, and how to how to connect to the emotions as they are as they were now um, in their own form that they had taken on their own. Um, so so it's a, it's actually a very powerful process to to be able to open that up and, and get in there and engage and then you know bring it back together again. Um, and then like you may still have like this feeling of talking to yourself at times, but it's like anybody does. A lot of people have this like yeah, I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm going to buy milk, I'm going to do, you know, there, there's an internal monologue that's very common. Um, but it feels like you. Like whenever I hear myself with an inner monologue, it still is me, unless I've watched a lot of Netflix and is watching a character with a foreign accent. Sometimes I start to hear the foreign accent in my mind, but um, but I, I still know it's me. I still recognize it as me. Um so, uh, so it's actually like super relieving for the system, for anybody's, you know, for your whole system when you're able to reintegrate those voices. Um, and then any voice you hear, you know, is yours and you know that it's part of your inner monologue. Um, and, uh, and, it, and it's supportive, you know. That's another big difference. When you go through and you, you heal from having internal voices that are persecutory, then, the, then you... you develop an inner voice that's supportive um, because that's part of the process, that's part of the transformation and the change when you do it bit by bit by bit by bit, you know, and uh, I definitely don't want to underestimate the commitment it takes to do something like that, it takes years, um, but it really pays off and, uh, and you're left in a much better position uh, when you're done. So, yep, yeah, please reach out if you have any questions, if you'd like to discuss it with me. Thank you.